Hi, I'm Samantha. I have a twin sis, Sally. Our school year has finished. Summer vacations ahead. I want to go out so much. Today we are having a party with our classmates and the both of us must be there. But mom told us to do a general cleaning of the house. This takes forever and Sally and I risk to be terribly late. Hey, listen, let's just run away and then think some excuse out for mom. Sally shook her head unhappily. Come on, don't be such a bore. Well, then let's make it look like we've cleaned everything and then go to the party. Sally kept on objecting. Okay, if you are such a nerd, then clean the house yourself, I'm leaving. I came home late at night. Hmm, it really seemed Sally had cleaned the entire house. In the morning, I was awakened by mom shouting and demanding I drop down immediately. Just as I'd shown up, she started questioning me where I'd been, which time did I come home and so on. When the storm was over and it seemed I had stood tall, mom claimed coldly this time I wasn't going to the summer camp. The one who'd cleaned the house goes there. What? But mom, I've been studying hard the whole year. This was a low blow. I stormed into Sally's room. What did you expose me for? And I call you a sister. But she just looked at me arrogantly and turned away. So you don't even want to speak? Then get lost, go to your camp. And so she did the very next day. Weeks dragged by. I was truly mad at my sister, but at the same time I missed her greatly. We're twins, we can't go without one another. We'd never parted for so long before. Sally's phone wasn't working. I wonder which backwater this camp was in. Mom never said a word about it. One evening I felt especially bad and entered Sally's room. Everything there reminded of her and the things smelled like her. Seemed like she'd just popped out and would be back right now. Oh, and what's this? There was a beautiful card on the desk. I looked closer. It was an invitation to a Miss State Beauty Contest. What a stinker she was! Sally wanted to do fashion and become Miss Universe since she was a little girl. And now she obviously had decided to take steps to that. But how could she keep it secret from me? We'd always told everything to each other. So that is why she was so arrogant last days. Keep your pathos, girl. You are still just Sally Cooper. I was counting days for my sister to return. But I didn't miss her anymore. I just wanted her to clean the house for the next month, as all this time the cleaning lady was me. I was about to throw up from these brooms and buckets, but then I'd have to clean it all again. It was a vicious circle. Oh, who's coming there? Could that be? Our Sally is back. I ran downstairs, but my parents opened the doors already. Hi, you were absent for so long. Today it's your turn to clean. I said this and rushed to the bathroom for the bucket and broom. Finally, I'll enjoy this long-awaited show. Knock, knock, may I come in? Sally looked exhausted and limp. What's happened to you? Cheer up, the cleaning waits. Here's your equipment. But Sally said she needed to rest and fell asleep immediately. We had an opportunity to talk only in three hours. Well, it wasn't exactly talking. I asked a million questions. Who was there in the camp? Did Sally date anyone? Which parties did they have? But I never heard anything exact. Sally, maybe you'll tell me something specific instead of beating around the bush? Or do you think you are incredibly cool now after going to the camp? Well, then sit here alone. That day we never saw each other again, but the next morning the first thing I did was run into Sally's room with the bucket and the broom. Now you won't slip away our arrogant model to be? I was knocking on her door for 10 minutes, but no one opened. Hey, don't you hear me? Why are you in bed? It's noon already. Get up, today it's your turn to clean. But Sally didn't even look at me and mumbled I'd have to clean again. What? Aren't you confusing things? Or maybe you still can't forgive me for that party. But you yourself didn't want to run away. After that, I've cleaned all the rooms four times already. So come on, take the broom and start. I was leaving the room already when I heard you'll clean all the time from now on. What? Is it a joke or what? Mom, Dad, where are you? I was boiling with anger and told my parents everything. But to my horror, they supported Sally and said I'd have to clean. Why so? Is this even fair? 
Am I a cleaning lady to you or what? I ran from the house in tears and was wandering in the streets until night. I didn't want to go home at all. What had Sally suddenly got our parents' mercy for? And why am I punished so hard for one single mistake? I won't clean anything on principle and I won't talk to Sally from now on. I kept my word, I didn't come to my sister, never asked about her, and she wasn't showing up much either. Mom even started bringing food to her room. Now that's nonsense you are doing, she ties you into knots and you serve her. Don't you see how she's changed after that camp? You parted us, so it's all your fault. Maybe she got involved in a cult there. This would have not happened if I'd been there. Suddenly I heard something breaking upstairs and Sally cried. Our parents rushed to her. I came to see what was happening too. It turned out Sis had dropped a tray with her food and juice and everything was on the floor. Well, 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 dear. I'll bring you the broom and the bucket, okay? I was about to enjoy watching Sally finally cleaning at least her room, but mom said I had to clean it. What? This is just too much now. Sally had become totally shameless and you are only indulging her. She's distanced from everyone and even kept secret she is invited to a beauty contest. She thinks she's a star and I must serve her? I'll never set foot in her room again. I turned around and headed to the door when Dad suddenly said something unpleasant. Something I didn't want to hear. <gasps> Repeat, please. Sally is sick? And then the confession came. A month ago my sister was diagnosed with a severe condition. Her muscles grew weaker and weaker every day and even the easiest moves became harder to perform. It was not a camp she went to, but a clinic where the doctors tried to help her. They hadn't told me anything before not to upset me earlier than it was needed, and the dirty floors were just an excuse to keep me home, allegedly as a punishment. I felt so nervous my legs grew weak. Dad caught me falling and brought me to my room. Hi, I'm still Sam, and this is my sis Sally. Now we are both on the bed rest. I turned out to have the gene code disrupted too. We are twins after all, but we are not losing heart. While the doctors think how to help us, we are actively blogging on YouTube. And sis, brace yourself, you'll be blown away now. You've won the beauty contest. Here, look, here's the letter. Well, it was indeed an online contest where people were evaluating only the pictures, but it's something to start with. When we get well, we'll kill the catwalks together. Did you like this video? Subscribe and give us a like. Support the channel. Thanks. Barely I got on stage. I got jammed up by police officers. Wait, I'm performing now. This is my concert. The officer snapped out that I was runaway criminal Nancy Black. What? Did they mistook me for my twin sister? I tried to explain that I was Tacy, and my family hadn't been in touch with this thug for a long time. But the policeman handcuffed me, and in front of the public, they dragged me out of the hall. I was bundled into a dirty van and told me they would return me to the colony, and for my escape, I would get another 10 years. From excitement, I began to choke. What are you doing? Let me go! I spent so many years working diligently to become a famous musician and make my way in life. After all, I had an example of my sister Nancy in front of my eyes, the thieving who so disappointed her parents. And now I went to jail instead of her. At the post, I was rudely patted down. They took all my things and gave me a jumpsuit. I was allowed to make one call, and in a panic, I dialed my parents. Mom immediately burst into tears. Dad promised to come up with something and asked me to be strong. But I was not allowed to finish. The guard took the phone and dragged me into solitary confinement. Everything was in cockroaches and mold. I was only thinking how I could get out of here. By the evening, the guards took me into the shower room. I was shaking, but only I ended up in the dressing room as I was surrounded by women prisoners. They began to shout that they helped me. That is, Nancy escaped. In return, she promised to release them. But in the end, she just ditched everyone. A prisoner roughly grabbed me and pressed me against a wall. I was trying to break out. Please stop! And then a muscular girl in tattoos came into the dressing room. The woman froze and made way for her. Apparently, she was the main one here. She came up to me and said in a hoarse voice to go after her. The others whispered that now I was done. After all, Usher got tough on the issues. Usher took me into the toilet cubicle and loomed over me, glaring at me. I was going to get killed like a fly now. 
But then Usher said she knew right away I was not Nancy. I would have taken everyone down. And she added that I couldn't survive here. My sister Nancy had too many enemies. God, yes, those women would just eat me. What was I supposed to do now? Usher replied that I needed to make an escape. And she was ready to help. Why did this rude woman suddenly want to help me? Usher told me that she was contacted by my parents. They were her school teachers, and they knew she was in the prison now. In return for my freedom, they promised to take care of her little daughter who got into the shelter. Who would have thought that such a criminal might have a child? Usher said she could arrange my escape in a week. There was less security in prison on holidays, but I had to help her organize everything. But most importantly, the train hard, because I was too weak for escape. All night, I could not close my eyes. I was afraid of Usher, but there were no other options to be free. From the next day, she made me do push-ups and wound-up circles on every walk. Prisoners were staring at us, but when Usher was around, I wasn't scared. On one of the walks, I was so out of strength that I even started crying. Then Usher felt sorry for me and allowed me to rest. She went to get water and suddenly I realized Usher was not around which meant that the prisoners would tear me up. I tried to run away, but they already blocked my way. But we were called out by the guard. Gather for lunch. The prisoners began to leave, shouldering me painfully. It's not over yet, bitchy. One of them hissed. Already in the dining room, I met Usher, and she reported that she had a working idea. I was a musician, right? So I could remember the movement of the floodlights as a musical rhythm. Usher added that she played piano with her daughter. Suddenly, I noticed tears in her eyes. But she turned away and pretended that she sneezed. I was surprised because there was so much pain in her words. I had no idea how she was suffering because of separation from her daughter. For the next few days, Usher continued to train me so I could get past the floodlights, which turned on in the prison yard under a special system. We memorized the order in which they turned on. Floodlights went along the rhythm of the walls. One or two or three, one or two or three, one or two or three. And soon I was making progress. I was engaged in music for so many years, not for nothing. Surprisingly, even Usher started praising me. There was one day before the escape, but we never decided what to do with the security. I'll talk them or hit them in the head. Usher offered to set a fire and distract the attention of security. But for this, she needed alcohol because it easily caught on fire. I was surprised, but Usher said they saw the room in one of the cells under the radar, and now I needed to get it. These prisoners would definitely finish me. But Usher said it was time for me to learn to solve problems on my own. And she added, they were always afraid of Nancy, and you should take an example from her. Then at night, I neatly got out into the hallway and went down the wall to the cell where the prisoners kept from. As soon as I got to the door and sneaked into the cell, Someone said in the dark that the mouse had come into the mouse trap itself. I froze in fear. At this very moment, I heard Usher's voice in my head. You need to solve problems on your own. Back to your bunks! I shouted hard and hit a light switch. Lights in the room went on. Prisoners froze and glanced at me. They obediently cleared the way for me, opening access to the bottles. I grabbed the first one and quickly exited the cell. I went back to Usher. Look what I got! But as she uncorked the bottle, she winced and shouted that it was tea. I took the wrong thing. I saw that Usher was very upset. I messed up her whole plan. But she already promised my parents to help me. Who else would look after her daughter? Usher hung down her head and began to remember how she and her daughter played the piano for the last time. And that's where it dawned on me. What if we put on a concert in prison? All security would be there and we didn't have to distract them. I offered Usher to speak with other prisoners. And at the concert, she would be able to play a waltz for me. And it would be easier for me to navigate when I escaped, when I got to the prison yard, and when I bypassed the floodlights. Usher looked at me and agreed. We would definitely do it. On the same evening, the administration got musical instruments for us. Every night, Usher and I rehearsed, and she managed to play well. Finally, it was the day of the concert. At lunch, I was terribly worried. It was necessary to take the keys from the guard somehow. I was hoping Usher would help me, but she was taken to set up the piano. What was I supposed to do? 
At this point, someone nearby choked with a piece of bread. At the same second, I also bit off the bread and began to depict that I was choking. The guard immediately ran up to me. Keys jingled on his belt. I reached for them and almost grabbed them. But suddenly I felt him knocking me on the back so I could start breathing. He got up from behind and there was no way I could get to the keys. Damn. The guard already headed to the exit. But I rushed to him and began to hug. He saved me. But he only rudely told me to get back to my seat. Then I returned to my table. Rubbing the key in my hand. I got it. Encouraged, I ran to the hall to usher. I wished her luck at the concert and thanked her for everything. But I suddenly hesitated. Saying goodbye was terribly sad. To that, Usher briefly said that it was time to do what we had been preparing for so long. I had to run right now, while there was still a chance. When all the security gathered in the hall, I walked discreetly into the hallway. I already opened a few doors and was at the exit, as suddenly I noticed the security guard next to it. Damn, why wasn't he at the concert? Not long thinking, I took off my sneaker and threw it to the other end of the hallway. The guard rushed there. I tiptoed my way to the exit. I inserted the key into the keyhole and suddenly the lock was jammed. I might not make it. In despair, I turned the key again and immediately popped into the prison yard. Barely stepping on the grass, I heard remote sounds of music. It was Usher. She was playing for me. TikTok. Strained to hear, I was carefully sneaking past the floodlights, orienting on the rhythm. One or two or three, I walked almost to the fence, but suddenly Usher lost the rhythm, and that's when I slipped. Damn, the floodlight blinded me. There was a deafening siren wailing, and then I rushed to the fence. I had to get there. I got caught on the barbed wire and hurt my hand, but still I could jump down. I was amazed at my strength. It seemed Usher's training did me good. I think I was finally free, but here I was blinded again. This time by the headlights of the car. Frightened, I rushed into the bushes, but I did not have time. Someone grabbed my arm. I turned around and couldn't believe my eyes. In front of me was my sister Nancy. And what was she doing here? My sister angrily replied that she found out about my escape. That's why she came here to prevent it. After all, I'm Stacy now, the violinist. She sat with a mockery. I was like thunderstruck. What was she talking about? This hussy stole my life? But Nancy said with a grin that it wasn't difficult. After all, look the same. Nancy grabbed me firmly and dragged me back to the prison gate. I tried to fight back, but she was stronger despite my training. It seemed the game was over. No, I don't want to go back to jail. That's the end. But suddenly, I saw Usher behind Nancy's back. She took out my sister. Usher, what are you doing here? He just saved my life. I realized I screwed up with that rhythm in the tune. When I heard the sirens, she told me, Now run quickly and know that Usher will always be around, if needed. After a long road, I was finally home. I rushed to my parents and broke down. How much I missed them. My dad said it would be fine now. Nancy and Usher were back in jail, and I got my life back. Having slightly calmed down, I told them everything, and they showed me a photo of Usher's daughter, an adorable baby. When I picked up the violin again, I thought for a long time what I would play, and I suddenly felt some melody. It was filled with sadness and my gratitude to Usher. I started playing it. A couple of days later, I sent Usher notes of the melody and wrote a letter, which ended with the phrase, Now at each of my concerts, this melody will be dedicated to you, the girl who taught me how to be a real bold.